In the last lecture, we learned how to handle events in a React application. Now here we have our React application and in this application, we are displaying a list of product. And each product here has this minus button and this plus button. So here we want to implement a functionality where when the user clicks on this plus button, it should increment the product count by one. And when he clicks on this minus button, it should decrement the product count by one. So let's say, for example, user wants to buy three bottles of this fresh milk. In that case, he can click on this plus button three times. So here the product count will be three. Then later the user decides that he only want to buy one bottle of fresh milk. So what he can do is he can click on this minus button two times. So every time this minus button will be clicked, the product count will be decremented by one. And every time the user clicks on this plus button, the product count will be incremented by one. And we want the same functionality for this minus button and plus button of other products. Let's see how we can do that. So let's go to VS code and let's go to this product details component. Here we are using this global variable product count to display the total product count. So here we are calling this function display formatted product count. So this is that function. And inside this function, what we are doing is we are checking if the product count is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, then it is going to return the product count. But if it is equal to zero or less than zero, in that case, it is going to return this string zero. And that's what you will see in the web page. So here it is displaying this string zero. Now let's go to VS code. And here on this button element and on this button element, we want to handle click event. Now notice that this button element here is a custom element. It is not a JSX element. It is a custom element. So basically this button here is this button component. So when we are using this button component as an HTML element here, it is going to call this function, this button function. And this function is going to return this button element. And that will be rendered in the web page. So let's try to handle the click event on this custom button element. And let's see if it works or not. So on this button element, let's go ahead and let's use on click event handler attribute. And to this, let's assign a JavaScript expression. So here what I will do is I will create a function here inside this product details function. And let's call this function increment product count. And here let's simply go ahead and let's increment this product count value. And let's also go ahead and let's log the product count value okay and here let's use function expression syntax okay so here we have created a function and inside this function we are incrementing the product count value by one and then we are also logging this product count value let's go ahead and let's create one more function for decrementing the product count value and let's call it decrement product count so here we want to decrement the product count and we also want to log the new value of this product count. All right. Now to this on click event handler attribute, let's go ahead and let's assign this method. And again, we don't need to use a set of parentheses after this function name because here we don't want to call this function. We simply want to assign a reference of this function to this on click event handler attribute. So I will remove the parenthesis. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's open developer console. Let's clear everything and let me click on this minus button. So you will notice that nothing has been logged here. Let me click once more. Again, nothing has been logged here. So that means when we are clicking on this button element, it is not calling this decrement product count function. That's because this button element here is a custom component and a component is nothing but a function. So here, when we are specifying this on click attribute, it will be created as a property of this props object. It is not going to work like an event handler attribute. So what we can do here? Here, let's go to product details component again. And here, let's provide a meaningful name. Let's call it maybe 
event handler okay so this event handler will be created as a property of this props object and that property will be assigned with a reference to this decrement product count function so basically this property which will be created on this props object it will have a reference to this decrement product count function so now what we can do is we can add a click event handler on this button element this jsx button element okay so here let's say on click and to this we can assign this function how we can do that we are assigning this function to this attribute and this attribute will be created as a property on this props object so here when we say props dot event handler this event handler has a reference to this function right so indirectly we are assigning this function to this on click event handler attribute in the same way on this button element also let's create this event handler property and to this we want to assign this increment product count function so for the second call of this button component this event handler property will be assigned with this function that means this props dot event handler will point to this increment product count function in case of second button element so whenever this button will be clicked it will execute this increment product count function and whenever this button will be clicked it will execute decrement product count function let's see that let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let's click on this plus button so you will notice that one is logged here let's click on this plus button again so two is logged let's click on this plus button again three is logged now when i click on this minus button it has decremented the product count by one so now two is logged now if i go to second product and there if i click on this plus button the expected result should be it should log one right but when i click on this plus button you will notice that it has logged three so the previous product count value was two and when we clicked on this plus button it incremented that product count value by one so now it is three so here it is working as expected but this is not how we want it to work it for a new product when this plus button is clicked for the first time it should display one when it is clicked two times it should display two in the same way when any other product is clicked for the first time it should always display one but it is not working like that so current value of product count is three if i click on this plus button you will notice that it has logged four but since we have clicked on this plus button for the first time our expected result was it should have logged one but it is not doing that that's because if i go to vs code you will notice that this product count is a global variable so from the app js we are calling this products component five times and from the products component we are calling this products detail component so when we are calling the products component five times this product details component will be also called five times that means this product details function will be called five times but this product count variable since it is a global variable it will remain common for all the calls because when we use a component it simply calls that function so this function will be called and this jsx will be returned and once this function is returned all these local variables will be destroyed but this product count it is not a local variable it is a global variable it will only get destroyed when we close our application i hope it makes sense here so here what we are going to do is i will cut this product count variable and this function from here and i will create a local variable and an inner function with the same name so now what will happen is every time this product details function will be called this product count will be reset to zero 
and since this product details function is called five times there will be five copies of this product count in the memory and each of these copies will be independent of each other so now if we go to the web page so if i click on this plus button it has logged one if i click again it has logged two now if i click the plus button of any other product you will notice that it start logging from one so let me click it three times so it has logged three then if i click the plus button of this product again it will start from one so now it is working properly in the same way if i click on this minus button it should decrement the value of that particular product count so for this product currently the product count is three if i click my minus button it should log two now if i click on minus button you will notice that it has logged two in the same way for this first product the product count is two as you can see here so if i click on this minus button it should log one so now these two buttons are working properly but you will notice that in the console it is logging the proper value but here in the web page it is always displaying zero even when the product count value has changed and you will learn why we have this kind of behavior and how we can fix it in the next lecture